Well, good evening, each one. We welcome you out to our online ministry. We're glad you can tune in tonight. We're going to turn together to opening hymn number 334. 334, and this is the hymn, Oh, say, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Jesus has come, and my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Let's sing it together now. There is a song in my heart today, something I never had. Jesus has taken my sins away, oh say but I'm glad. Oh say but I'm glad, I'm glad, oh say but I'm glad. Jesus has come and my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Wonderful, marvelous love he brings into a heart that's sad. Through darkest tunnels the soul just sings. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Jesus has come and my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Won't you come to him with all your care, weary and worn and sad? You too will sing as his love you share. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Jesus has come and my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Amen. We have much to be glad in. The scripture says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And it says, this is the Lord. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Isaiah 25, verse 9. We have much to be thankful for. We rejoice in the salvation of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight for this time we can gather in and we can share your word. We pray, Father, that you would uh, draw us close to thyself. We pray, Father, that we would be thankful and be glad for the wonderful salvation we have, for the wonderful hope that we have, and, Father, uh, for the joy to know that you're with us each and every day. Father, we pray that you would be with those tonight that are going through difficulty, some that may be sorrowing, some that may be experiencing loneliness or pain. We pray, Father, for those that are going through times of spiritual difficulty. We know, Father, that we face many enemies in this world, and we face many enemies in these bodies that we live in. But we thank you, Lord, that you've promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for our Savior, who died for us, who was buried and rose again the third day and who's alive today. We thank you that we have life in him. As we study now this uh, passage of scripture, we ask, Lord, that you would uh, use it for your glory, cause us to be drawn closer to thee, and we'll thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go back to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we came through the first number of verses last time together, and we're going to take up the next section tonight. This is the last letter uh, that the Apostle Paul most probably wrote. We know Timothy was a was an individual that the Apostle Paul had the privilege of discipling, of encouraging, of helping and teaching. And now Timothy was involved in pastoral ministry. He was involved in the preaching of the Word of God. He was involved in the edification of the saints and the work of an evangelist. And he was called to be a workman. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We know that 2 Timothy was an epistle and is a letter that deals with the departure from the word of God, a turning away from truth. And we know that that is something that we see in our world today, there is a turning away from the Word of God. And so as Christians, as Bible believers, this is a passage in a, in a book that we can be encouraged and stirred up in the things of the Lord, that we'll be remain faithful as Timothy was called to remain faithful. And we're going to read in at verse number 1. 
and take up our passage. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly to me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Antichicus have I left in Ephesus, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, and but especially the parchments. Alexander the co coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works, of whom thou wear also, be thou aware also, for that he greatly withstood our words. For my, at my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God it may not be laid to the charge. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me, and strengthened me, that by the preaching, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Salute Priscilla and Aquila in the household of Anesiphorus. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus greeteth thee and Prudence and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word tonight. So we came through the first number of verses last time, and there was the exhortation and the charge that we found here to preach the word. And Timothy was reminded that he is one day going to stand, just as one day we are all going to stand as believers, those that have believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. We will all stand and give an account before the judgment seat of Christ. And the scripture says, And the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. We are reminded that the Lord Jesus is the judge. He is the judge of all the earth. As believers will stand and give an account. Unbelievers will stand at that great white throne judgment that's recorded in the book of the Revelation and, uh, and be judged. But the calling that Timothy received was to preach the word and to be instant, be always ready to preach. And the, the reasoning, there's a great responsibility we found to preach the word, to be true to the word of God, and the great reasoning behind that was because there's going to come a time when people are not going to want to hear the truth of God's word. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will want another message. They will not want another preacher. They will want another Bible. They will want something else other than what God has already given to us and that which is faithful and needful for us and for our walk with the Lord. And it says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned on the fables. Now, uh, he gives this warning. Now he's going to turn and he's going to remind Timothy that he has a responsibility to do. And that responsibility is to fulfill the ministry that the Lord has called him to. He's going to call Timothy to carry out the course that God has called him to. And then he's going to reference his own life and uh, remind Timothy that he has come, he's nearing the very and he's nearing the finish mark, as it were. The Apostle Paul was. And so he says in verse 5, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. 
make full proof of thy ministry, speaks of the truth to fulfill whatever God has called you to do. Make full proof of thy ministry. You know, we have all been called the various types of ministry. The Lord has a plan and a will for each and every one of us. His plan for me is different than his plan for you. But he desires to give glory to himself by the work that happens through the church. And uh, fulfilling that which he's called us to do is, that is our ultimate purpose. And we don't have to wonder why we're here or, or uh, what the future is going to bring. We just need to trust the Lord, be faithful to what he's called us to do, and trust him that he's going to see us through. One of my favorite verses is back in Philippians chapter 1, and verse number 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. This teaches us the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus. This teaches us that the Lord is with us, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and it has the aspect of being faithful, moving forward, trusting the Lord. And so that's what Timothy was being called to. He was called to a number of things in, in the, this letter that we found. But he says, but watch thou in all things. What does that speak of? That, that means being sober. That means being alert. And uh, we need to uh, realize that our greatest helper is the very one who lives on the inside of us, the Holy Spirit of God. If we don't have a relationship to the Holy Spirit of God within us, if he's not leading our lives, if we have not submitted to his will and his leading, we're going to find ourselves in trouble because God has given to us of his Holy Spirit. And he, he desires to fill us and he desires to equip us and he desires to empower us for service. And so the Holy Spirit of God lives within us. And so when we read the verse that says, watch thou in all things, it's not going to come as a result of our own strength, our own ability. We know there's, uh, he's just speaking of those that are going to turn away their ears from the truth and be turned onto fables. And so it is in direct relation to the fact that there's false teaching going to happen. And we need the Spirit of God's leading. We need discernment. We need to know what the Bible says, and we need to be willing to stand upon it. Watch thou in all things. And then he says, endure afflictions. You know, if we're going to be faithful to the word of God, there is going to be times of affliction. It says back in chapter 2 or chapter 3 in verse number 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Persecution was something that not only happened in the early church, Persecution is something that's happening in the church 2021. There are Christians that are being persecuted in 2021 all across the earth in different countries, different ways. Sometimes it's a, a physical persecution. Sometimes uh, there's just threatenings that come out. Uh, this will happen if you continue to preach the gospel. And so we know the gospel message is not a popular message. Jesus made many enemies by the message that he brought. His message didn't, it, yes, certainly it united believers together, but it caused a great division. And that is the message of the gospel. The, because Jesus is the only way. He is the truth. He is the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And to be able to say the only way of salvation that's a message that isn't popular today. Only way of having our sins forgiven is through the blood of Christ. That's not popular today. That there is a literal heaven and a literal hell. That's not popular today. The, the message of the word of God will cause division. And as a result, it can cause afflictions. It can cause persecutions. And Timothy is called to endure these. To uh, endure afflictions. He was called to be a soldier back in chapter 2 and verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And part of that responsibility of enduring hardness as a good soldier means that there was times of enduring afflictions. And the Apostle Paul went through many times of suffering, more than one occasion. Uh, if you turn back over to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 1. 
We as we then as workers together with them beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in, the t in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. And he gives this list uh, in the ministry that he experienced and the privilege of preaching the gospel and preaching the message of the Lord Jesus Christ to the church lost. And yes, there was times of distress and yes, there was times of affliction, but he uh, recognized that the Lord was with them and he saw that the Lord had delivered him out. Notice what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 7. Uh, verse number 16, we read this earlier. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge, notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by the preaching, that, that by me the preaching might be fully known, uh, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who was the Apostle Paul trusting? Where was his faith? It wasn't in himself. It was in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a tremendous example for us as followers of Jesus. We're not to trust in ourselves. We're to trust in the Lord. And the Apostle Paul had many times of affliction, and he looks to Timothy, and he says, endure afflictions. That's part of the ministry. That's part of the work that the Lord has called you to do. He also calls him to do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. And what does this speak of? This speaks of sending out the good news, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that there is no salvation Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, if a preacher or a teacher does not have a, a, an appeal to both the saved and the unsaved, how can we expect the unsaved to come to know Christ as personal Savior? And so in the local church, there is opportunity for teaching those that know Christ as Savior, but there must always be a call to the lost that they would come to know Christ as personal Savior, that they would turn from their sins, believe upon Jesus, be saved, and be saved for all of eternity. And that's the, that's the tremendous message that we have to share with the whole world. Jesus said when his great commission, he called us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's the commission that he's given to the church. And we're to fulfill that and be faithful in it. And Timothy was called to be faithful in it. And so he's got all these aspects. He's got watch in all things. He knows that there's a, a great departure happening. Endure afflictions. That means that there was going to be trouble that was going to come upon him. Do the work of an evangelist. That means even though there's all these things happening, he's going to preach the gospel, reach the lost. And then he says, make full proof of thy ministry. Fulfill that which God has called you to do. And so in that one little verse, verse 5, there's a powerful message, isn't there? And we can take it to heart. We can learn a lot from it. And the Lord can help us to be watchful in all things, to endure times of affliction faithfully, to uh, do the work of an evangelist. And that doesn't mean you have. we all have to be on every corner preaching somewhere, but it means that 
we're taking the gospel where we go, and we're being faithful to those opportunities that the Lord uh, gives to us to share with others. And it also means that we're part of a Bible-believing church that opens the Word of God and preaches the gospel for souls to be saved. And then, make full proof of thy ministry. And each one of us has a responsibility before the Lord to be faithful to the will of God for each and every one of our lives. We go back to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What is it, What are we called to do? We're called to present our bodies a living sacrifice. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God uh, in your body, which, which is his. And he has bought us. We belong to him. In verse 2, Be and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And these two verses ought to be uh, great encouragement and great challenge for us. They're also good verses to help us to, to be realigned, to realign our thinking with Scripture. How would the Lord have us think? How would he have us walk? What are these bodies for that he's given us? That they would be a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay, so he speaks to Timothy. Uh, he warns him. He calls him in verse 5. But then he speaks of his own ministry and his own opportunity to serve the Lord as the Apostle Paul comes down to the end of his days. And he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. One put it this way, that, that he looked around. And we find two words as he looks around here. We find the word offering, and that word speaks of being poured out on the altar, as a drink offering, as it were, he says, I'm ready to be offered. And then the other word we find is the word departing. And the time of my departure is at hand. And uh, this word departure has the, uh, the picture of, the, of, a, of a, a boat ready to, uh, to uh, raise the anchor. Uh, a boat ready to raise the mainsail. And, uh, and, you know, this really parallels... Uh, also, the, the picture is the, the, uh, the tent, ready to uh, depart, to, to have this tent removed. And this picture is back in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, what he speaks of in relation to the believer's departure and uh, our immediate presence with the Lord. In, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, notice what he says in verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, and he's speaking of our bodies, were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with heavens eternal, not made with, excuse me, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. That's a tremendous verse, isn't it? A house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. We have a body that is uh, prepared for us that is we're going to live for all of eternity in and we're going to take up that body one day for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven our heavenly body if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that which we be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who hath also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. 
But uh, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether we be present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and uh, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And so we are confident. We have tremendous hope that the Lord has prepared for us an eternal body, one that we're going to take up residence in one day. These earthly bodies are temporal. They have problems, and one day they're going to go to the grave. Uh, but we're going to have a new glorious body, a body that's being prepared, and that was a body that the, the Apostle Paul was longing for. And he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He was going to take up a new body. And so he looks around, he recognizes he's ready to depart, but he also looks back. And that's part of coming to the end of our days. We, we look around and see the situation that is presently, but we can look back and give thanks to God for his provision in time gone by. And he says this in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He fought a good fight, and certainly he was a soldier. He uh, finished his course, the course that the Lord had called him to. And that was his goal, to be faithful to the end. And, and the Lord has a course for each and every one of us. And it is going to require battle, spiritual battle. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And so, yes, it's going to require spiritual battle. And Paul looks back in his life, he says, I have fought a good fight. And he said, I've finished my course, coming to the end of the line here. And, he's, and another tremendous part of this verse is he, he says, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. And that is how heartening it is to see individuals who come to the end of their days and have been faithful to the Lord, have been faithful to the Lord. And may the Lord help us to be faithful to him so that when the time comes, when we're at the end of our days, we can hear that well done, good, good and faithful servant and uh, from the Lord. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. It wasn't easy, but it was needful, and the Lord was with him and helped him. And you know, the, the life that the Lord has called us to is not always going to be easy. There are going to be battles and challenges in the Christian life. We're going to face everyday problems as a Christian. But the Lord is with us. He wants to help us. He wants to strengthen you. And he says, I have kept the faith. So he looks back. And uh, he, we think of his missionary journeys. We think of many times when he was stoned and he was, uh, in, he was thrown into prison many times, left for dead. He said, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Now he looks, for, he looks ahead. And uh, this is the hope of the believer. You know, it doesn't just end. We don't just look back and say, well, thank you, Lord, for life that you've given me we can be thankful certainly but we look ahead he has something far more glorious for us in store he says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord a righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing do we love his appearing tonight are we looking for the coming of the lord jesus christ when he can come to the clouds at any moment and call us home and he says there's going to be laid up for him a crown of righteousness. He speaks about who it is that's going to distribute these crowns. The Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, the one, the judge who shall, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is the righteous judge, who will give those rewards at that day. And we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. May we be faithful to the Lord. 
Timothy was called to be faithful to the Lord. And as we come to the conclusion of this epistle, and Lord willing, we'll pick up our lesson next week, we're going to find that, yes, there were some uh, individuals that he's going to mention, some that had caused difficulty in the ministry, some that had recovered out of times of difficulty and were useful once again, and others that were remaining to be faithful. And, uh, and we're going to see that the Apostle Paul mentions some of these as we finish up this chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. But uh, so he, he uh, looked around, he looked back, and he looked ahead. And that can be a uh, lesson for us tonight. We look around, we see where we're at. We look back, we give thanks to the Lord for how he's provided. And we look ahead, looking onto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. And I want to close our a meeting and a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. We thank you that uh, Jesus came to save us from our sin. He came to give his life for us at Calvary, and he lives, and we will live because he lives, because we have believed upon him for salvation. And Father, we pray if there's any that are tuning in tonight and they've never invited Jesus Christ to be their savior, that tonight would be the night they say, that is enough. I will believe. I will turn. I will place my faith upon him, believing his blood was shed for me. And I, inv I invite you, Jesus, into my heart. Save me. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Savior. This I pray in your name. And Father, we thank you that many have come and many more are going to come. We pray that they will come to receive you even this night. We pray for Christians. We pray that believers would be encouraged. We pray, Father, we'd be challenged to be faithful in these days of departure, these days of darkness in which we're living in. Father, help us, strengthen us, cause us to have boldness, cause us to be faithful. Help us, Father, to handle your word properly with the, with the enablement of the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you that he indwells us. And Father, you want to lead us. And Lord, we again thank you for this time around your word, we pray for each and every Christian tonight. We pray, Father, for those that are going through times of, of uh, difficulty, again, with so many health restrictions in the various provinces. And Lord, we pray that you be with them. Help them, Lord. See them through. And Father, help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you, and we'll see you, Lord willing, on the Lord's day.